everybody. Uh, let me introduce to you, I can't think of a better way to start this service today uh, than in the baptistry, the very first baptist baptism in this uh, new facility. And I want to, you may already know him, but I want to introduce to you uh, Galacio Velaforte. Uh, Galacio has been attending our church for about a year now and has been active and involved in helping just about wherever he can. And, um, and he texted me yesterday. He said, I think I want to be baptized tomorrow. And he and Shane have been talking for some time. And uh, so it's a great honor to introduce to you Galacio Velaforte. <laughs> I, t I try to say that in my best Italian, but it just doesn't seem to <laughs> come out. Com comes out a little hillbilly. So, uh, uh, so Galatia, I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. I believe. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the Living God. The Son of the Living God. The leader and Savior of my life. The leader and Savior of my life. God bless you, Galatia. Upon your confession of faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Buried with Christ, raised to walk in a new life. Good to have you today. Like I said, I can't think of a better way to start this day off than uh, seeing a, a new member of the family. Agreed? Amen? Amen. Uh, this, is a, this is a good day. And uh, uh, this is a small baptistry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tight fit in here. Uh, so, uh, But don't let that stop you, you know. We'll make room. <laughs> They, they can't play on get away. Uh, but uh, that's a great day and a great start to our service and our time together today. Um, so uh, we're glad you're here. This is uh, our last week of 9, 10, and 11 o'clock services. Next week we go to our regular schedule at 9 and 10.30. So looking forward to that and uh, getting back to some semblance of normalcy around here, right? You don't seem too enthusiastic about that, right? Okay, all right. Why don't you stand and Jason and the team are going to come. Morning, everyone. You are my joy. You are my song. You are the well, the one I'm drawing from. You are my refuge, my whole life long. Where else would I go. Surely my God is the strength of my soul. Your love defends me. Your love defends me. And when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me. Your love defends me. Day after day, night after night, I will remember you're with me in this fight. Although the battle, it rages on, the war's already won. I know the war is already won. Surely my God. I feel like I'm all alone. 
Your love defends me. Your love defends me. Surely my God is the strength of my soul. Your love defends me. Your love defends me. And when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me. Your love defends me. We sing.
wow, of course we're opening children's programming back up again. Mm hmm No, you're right. This COVID-19 has put a lot of people worried. But I want to reassure you that our number one focus is to keep our kids safe. You want to see a walkthrough of how we're going to do things here at church? Well, absolutely. Let me explain just a few things. That old coronavirus has been really scary, and it's had to put a lot of things on hold for a while. But we here at Unity Christian Church have guidelines for our students, and with this walkthrough video, we can show you exactly how things are done. video up on our Facebook. Uh, good morning. Uh, we just posted a video up on our Facebook page. Uh, it's a it's a walkthrough of what you're going to be expecting as part of our children's programming. Next week, we're going back to two services. And so all of our children's programming for nursery through fifth grade will be made available for both services. So our nursery, our three and four year five year olds for preschool and kindergarten, as well as Unity Kids, first grade through fifth grade. So there's going to be a video up on our Facebook today. It's a it's kind of a walkthrough with this comedic in uh, in uh, kind of just video that we posted today with, that answers questions. And uh, so guests and parents and anybody else, go watch that video today. Uh, share it. Let people know what we're doing here at Unity. Also, another cool announcement, a month from today, September 2nd, uh, United Home, the podcast that we do each week, will be transitioning to Unite Inside, and our middle schoolers and high school groups, age groups, are going to be meeting together for the first time since March. So we're very excited. More details will be released as we get closer to that, uh, but those are some really exciting things that are happening. So go watch this video. It's really great. Share it, uh, and uh, be expecting what we're going to be doing here at Unity. So thanks, guys. Well, over the course of uh, these last couple of weeks, um, I've been uh, kind of zeroing in on the topic about making a difference. Now, uh, last week we talked about you got to be committed uh, to make a difference in your world and the world around you and the lives of the people around you. Today at 8 o'clock, we premiered our Back to uh, uh, UCC, uh, Cynthia, Kentucky channel on YouTube. Uh, we uh, dropped uh, a service that is a part of this series that you won't get unless you watch it online. Um, <laughs> the magic of technology. Um, and that is, uh, it takes confidence. Uh, and there are things that just have shattered uh, our confidence even in these uh, times. And so that went up at 8 o'clock this morning on our YouTube channel. Uh, and you can watch that as the third sermon in this series. So, and then we're going to talk about courage today. Now, we did that because, because we were recording our live services. Um, uh, we weren't able to get them online until up in the afternoon. And we feel like, and we had several comments about people missing us because they couldn't get us in the morning. So we've remedied that. Today, 8 o'clock, we showed... Uh, make a difference with confidence, healing the uh, scars of your shattered confidence was that message today that went online, and then this message today then will be up next Sunday, always at 8 o'clock. So uh, we'll be on a week delay, uh, and probably I'm going to have you edit this out at some point uh, so that we don't let that secret out to anybody else, you know, just, just you all. <laughs> It's one of those sneaky things that technology allows us to do. And here's the thing. I know Gary and Lita Latimer, uh, they, they uh, in order to make sure they get it on Sunday morning, they, they showed a lot of discipline and held off a week. So now they're watching a week delay because they're unable to be with us because of health concerns, and I get that. And so, uh, so, so now they're kind of going to be two weeks behind, and, and they won't know it. Shh. <laughs> Be very, very quiet. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I'm, I'm going to take a, a second here and give him an edit break. <laughs> so I... <laughs> I love that. Welcome back. I missed you guys. Okay. Uh, so today we're going to talk about making a difference in our world with courage. And it takes courage in order to make a difference because nobody ever wants to be called a coward right I mean of all the things we can be called the probably the most despised name we could ever be called in our culture today and the most despised of human qualities is that of being a coward we'll do almost anything <laughs> not that that applies to me we'll do almost anything to avoid being called a coward 
Uh, you know, like in the uh, Back to the Future series, you know, Marty McFly hated to be called a chicken. It had always forced him into doing some really stupid stuff over the course of those series of movies. He didn't like to be called a chicken. Nobody likes that, you know. Or like Tommy and from that famed theologian Kenny Rogers, you know, everyone considered him the coward of the county. Well, nobody likes that. The truth is, I believe this to the core of my being, that it takes a great deal of courage just to face the ordinary challenges of life today. Courage every day. It takes a lot to live right and to do the right thing without wimping out. It takes a commitment to a cause. It takes confidence that comes only from God. And it takes courage to ch- make a difference in our world. See, if you're going to change the world, you've got to be a changed person because changed people change the world. You're not going to change the world around you by imitating it. You're not going to change the world around you by blending in with it. You're not going to change the world around you by just going along with the flow of the culture and society around us or or just swimming downstream with the current. The bottom line is if you want to make a difference in your life today, you've got to be willing to be different. And it takes courage to be different in our world today. You've got to be willing to have people say things about you. (laughs) Maybe not such nice things. You've got to be willing to take criticism, to be questioned, to be joked about. Because to make a difference in our world today, you have to be different. And in this world, it takes courage (laughs) to live differently. Jesus put it this way in John 16, 33. He said, in this world, you will have hardship. You know, as if, hey, you know, he doesn't say you may have hardship. There may be hardship coming down the way. He's very definitive about it. In this world, you will have hardship. So expect it. So he says, be courageous. I have conquered the world. I want to start off by giving three practical ways today that you can develop courage in your life and your courage will be on display with these practical uh, truths first of all I show courage by owning up to my sin I show courage by owning up to my sin now I intentionally chose this word sin today (laughs) because it is a word that we love to avoid You know, we don't want to talk about our sin. We choose to call it just about everything else. Well, I made a (laughs) boo-boo. Well, that was just a a, a mistake in judgment. Uh, That was a a character flaw in me. Well, it was a brief indiscretion or an oversight on my part. You see, we call it everything uh, everything we can without calling it sin, but the Bible's very clear. The Bible calls it sin. As a matter of fact, the Bible says we've all sinned. Paul wrote Romans in Romans 3.23. He said, for all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. That leaves nobody out. We've all sinned. And then John says in 1 John 1.8, he said, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. See, being able to own up to personal sin, failure in our lives is a mark not just of emotional health, but it is a mark of spiritual health. It's a mark of courage when we own up to our failure and our sin. The Bible says this in Proverbs 28, you'll never succeed in life if you try to hide your sins. Our inability to own up to our personal sin and responsibility is probably, not probably, it is the greatest destroyer of marriages and relationships and careers when we fail to admit admit and live up or own up to our own sin. People who make a difference. People who make a lasting difference for good in life do it out of a, a personal authenticity of owning up to our failures and our sins. You see, fakes, phonies, cons need not apply (laughs) because they don't last. Truth lasts. And think about this. The Apostle Paul probably couldn't be any more honest about his shortcomings, about his own personal sin and his own strength. Remember, when he was talking about his strength, he said, follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. 
but he was just equally as honest about his sin. He said he could also say, I am the chief of sinners. He was very honest. And he even wrote about his sin and his failure uh, for all of posterity. So that here we are 2,000 years later, we're still learning from his truth about owning up to the sin and our failures in our life. That's what courage is. Courage is owning up to our sin. Secondly, courage is standing up for what is right. Courage is standing up for what is right. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, Stay true to what you believe. Be courageous. Be strong. Today, and it seems to be getting more and more, or fewer and fewer, I should say, of followers of Jesus Christ, Christians who are willing to stand up for what's right. In a world where tolerance is valued over truth, and in a world where people even doubt the existence of right or wrong, a lot of believers today, especially in the climate of our world today, are afraid to stand up for truth. We're afraid that if we do, we'll be labeled prejudiced or bigoted or narrow-minded or judgmental or out of date. Whatever, whatever adjective you want to put on it of somebody who speaks to truth, you know, most people are afraid to get that label so they don't stand up for what is right. If you're a believer, this is God's word to good people. Listen to what he says in Ezekiel 3. This is from the International Children's Bible Translation. It says, if you don't speak out to warn the evil person to leave their evil ways, they will die in their sin. But I'll hold you responsible for their death. Now, I got to tell you, maybe you've never read that passage before, but I got to tell you, that's probably one of the most sobering passages in all of Scripture. The Bible says, and that's what he says here, if I know the truth, if I know what is right, if I know the difference between right and wrong, and I see somebody messing up their life, or I see somebody heading down that wrong path or doing the wrong thing, and I don't say anything about it, then what this verse says is God's going to hold me responsible for not confronting them with their sin or the direction that their life is taking. Proverbs 14. Sure, those people will appear to be having a good time, but all that laughter will end in heartbreak. God says that when I know the difference between right and wrong, and I don't say anything about it, if I don't confront, it's evil. It's evil for me not to confront. See, courage is standing up for what is right. Have you seen, they brought that show back because they're desperate for programming. You know, what would you do? One of the news, I think, I don't know, one of the networks puts it up and they, they put people, they bring in actors and they put people in what seems to be real life situations of, of wrongdoing and they wait and see the unsuspecting people around them to see what would you do, you know. I'd like to think that on some of those circumstances, I'd like to think I'd be the guy that said, hey, 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 you got to stop that because that's not right. And we might be that committed to doing what's right when we see it unfolding in front of us. But for whatever reason, we lose our courage when it has to do with someone we love. Or someone that's taking a wrong path and we see them taking the wrong path and we don't do anything about it. The Bible says it's evil for us to ignore that person. And let me tell you, there's a whole lot of confusion these days about what is right and what is wrong, isn't there? And the answer to that confusion is truth. And the only place you're going to find truth about what is right and what is wrong is in this book. This is the standard. Doesn't matter what anybody else says. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. This is truth. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. This book is the standard. And when it's right, it always aligns with the Word of God. 
Always. If it's wrong, it contradicts the word of God. It just, it really is just that simple. So if you want to know what's right or wrong, you need to spend time in this book. Because it, it tells it like it is. There's, there's no mincing words. There's no gray areas. It's either right or it's wrong. It either aligns with the truth of this book or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, <laughs> it's wrong. It really is just that simple. And if you claim to be a believer, if you claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, there'll be times in your life when out of love, you've got to care enough to confront somebody. That's why we need courage. Love always confronts. You say, how do I get that kind of courage? Where do you get that kind of courage to make a difference in life, to speak to that relative, that son or that daughter, that parent, that friend, that coworker who's gone off the deep end, whose life seems to have gone off the rails and they're about to make the greatest mistake of their life? Where do you get the courage to confront them in love? Psalm 119, the psalmist says, let your love, God, shape my life. Then I'll be able to stand up to mockery. In other words, you know, when you stand up for what's right and love shapes your life, you, you will be ridiculed. You'll be criticized. That's why he said, let your love shape my life. Then I'll be able to stand up to mockery. Why? Because I trust your word. And as I look for your truth and your wisdom, I'll tell the world what I find and speak out boldly in public unembarrassed see you want to know what motivates courage in your life and in my life love for God love for truth and love for people that's what motivates courage number three courage means I speak up for Christ it means I speak up for Christ Paul told Timothy God doesn't want us to be shy with his gifts but be bold and loving and sensible So don't be embarrassed to speak up for our master. The New Century Version puts it this way. Don't be ashamed to tell people about our Lord Jesus. Peter says this, 1 Peter 3.15. Always be ready to speak and tell anyone who asks you why you're living the way you are. And then he says, if you're going to answer that, if you're going to speak to people like that, then always do it with the utmost of courtesy. We use truth to correct people's life. But this isn't a hammer. (laughs) This isn't a club. When I first started preaching, believe it or not, I was 14 years old when I preached my first sermon. And I remember that first sermon. I can't tell you what the topic was, but I thought, you know, I was probably going to go for 40 minutes at least, and I went seven. (laughs) Yeah, I know what you're thinking right now. Bring that guy back, right? (laughs) Bring that seven-minute guy back. (laughs) No, uh, he's not coming back, okay? Uh, And I, I had the opportunity to preach fairly regularly at my home church, and then other churches started asking me to come preach for them, you know, on Sunday night. Uh, uh, before, I, before I turned 16, uh, I held my first six-week interim, interim ministry, uh, uh, preached six weeks in a row for a guy that was out for surgery, you know. <laughs> I remember one of the lessons my dad taught me from early on. Because, you know, he had witnessed through his life a lot of preachers. Loved a lot of preachers, encouraged and supported a lot of preachers. And he told me, he said, since you're going to choose this path, you need to know um, that you never preach from a bully pulpit. You you know, this word isn't about beating people up. It's not about, you know, boy, I showed them, you know. 
And there's always the person that woes out after you preach. No, I'm not saying you don't preach hard and you don't preach truth. And sometimes truth penetrates right to the bone and marrow. That's what the Bible says. You know, that's what happens. You cuts to the bone. <laughs> and I can't say there haven't been times when, when the word of God hasn't cut somebody to the bone. You know, <laughs> not, because I, not because I pulled out the club and let them have it. Uh, or, or the, uh, the chop, chop, bang, bang. You know, that's Acts 2, 38. <laughs> Acts Two, chop, chop, 38, bang, bang. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, anyway, the whole idea is, you know, the, the Word of God and the Spirit of God, you know, takes the Word and applies it. Uh, and if it's hard truth, it's hard truth. But I want you to know the whole idea is that it's presented in love. That's the only way you can present truth, especially if somebody's messing up their life. Especially when it comes to owning up to your own sin. Especially when it comes to standing up for what's right. This isn't rocket science. When you talk to somebody about Jesus Christ, all you got to say is, you know, Jesus Christ died for you on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin, which is death. And God has a plan and a purpose for your life. See, people don't need your knowledge. What they need is your love. Let me tell you, I don't know that I've ever argued anybody into heaven. <laughs> never, that's never happened. You love them into heaven. You express your love for people. You express your love for God to them and, and express your love for them. And your love builds a bridge from your heart to their heart so that Jesus can cross that bridge into their life. And you don't even have to be a Bible scholar to do that. You just have to love people. Let me tell you, God wants to use you. He wants to use you in this world. He wants to use you in this world right now. And he will. If you're willing to own up to your sin, if you're willing to stand up for what's right, and if you're willing to speak up for Jesus Christ. Well, over this uh, two weeks plus one, what I've talked about in making a difference is it takes a commitment, it takes confidence, and it takes courage. How can I ratchet up my courage? Because it seems to be this is the key element in speaking out and standing up and stepping up. Let me give you four steps to ratchet up my courage. Number one, go public through baptism. Go public through baptism. Now, most of you have done that, I know. Others of you, I have, are believers. You've made that confession of faith in your life and in your walk. Uh, and yet to cross that line of commitment because when you do, when you go public and you say, you know what, I've made my, my belief in Christ, I've confessed my faith in Jesus Christ, I believe with all of my heart, but you haven't crossed the line and sometimes it takes courage to stop being a secret agent disciple <laughs> and become public saying, I'm not ashamed. Peter said, and this water this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. It's not the removal of dirt from the body, look at this, but a pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So let me encourage you today. Do something courageous. Galacio in the first service did something courageous today. He texted me last night and he said, I think I'm going to be baptized tomorrow. He and Shane had been talking for quite some time about it. And I said, interesting, you have come to that point. Because last week I talked about the commitment to believe with all of your heart, you know, and confess that Jesus is Lord and to be obedient in baptism. And I said, sometimes it takes the step of courage to do that, Galacio. And he took that step of courage today. So do something courageous if you haven't already. Step across the line in your public profession of a choice and decision you've already made in your heart. Number two, pray for boldness. Pray for boldness. Ask God for courage. Even the Apostle Paul did this. He's in Ephesians 6, he said, Pray and ask God to give me the right words as I boldly tell others about the Lord. He prayed for boldness. So ask God for courage. Pray for boldness to, to step up, to stand up, and to speak up. And then number three, expect God to use me. Expecting. You know, if you're willing to step up in courage and, 
and public profess your faith and belief in Jesus Christ and be obedient in baptism, if you're willing and you're praying for boldness, then expect God to use you. Paul did. Philippians 1.20. He said, I expect and hope that I will not fail Christ in anything, but that I will have the courage now, as always, to do what? To show the greatness of Christ in my life here on earth, whether I live or die. He's writing this from prison. And he said, I just, you know, you know, I, I want to live boldly to show the greatness of Christ if I live or die. <laughs> I, I want to live boldly till that day. See, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing the right thing in spite of your fear. Courage is not even the absence of anxiety. Because here's the deal, you're going to have anxiety when you talk to people about their relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. You're going to have anxiety when you talk to people about the critical issues of life. Courage is moving ahead in spite of your anxiety. Courage is doing the right thing because you love. You love God. You love truth. You love people. In Joshua 1 the Israelites are getting ready to cross into the promised land. They're not sure what that land holds, life or death. But the word from God is be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And finally, you want to ratchet up your courage? Remember the end of the story. Remember the end of the story. James 5 Uh, Verse 8, James says, take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. There are a whole lot of people talking about the coming of the Lord today and that we are in the last days. Let me tell you, you know, I believe we've been in the last days since Jesus ascended into heaven. (laughs) You know, they they just get worse sometimes. But uh, the whole point of what James is saying, take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. Let me tell you something. I've read the last chapter of this book (laughs) and we win. One day, Jesus Christ is going to come. That is inevitable. It's going to happen. And he will reward the righteous and he will punish the wicked. On that day, he will establish justice. That's going to happen. No matter what anybody else says, no matter what anybody else does, friends, Jesus is coming back. Because history is his story. He wrote the book. He has the plan. And when we get to the last chapter of this book, those who wear the name of Jesus Christ get to live forever with Him. That and that alone ought to give us courage today. Job said this. He says, you'll have courage because you will have hope. And if anybody has hope, even in these days... It is those who wear the name of Jesus Christ. You'll have courage because you'll have hope. Friends, it takes courage to own up to your sin. It takes courage to follow Jesus Christ, even and especially when it's unpopular. It takes courage to follow Jesus Christ when it's inconvenient. It takes courage to follow Jesus Christ even when we sometimes don't understand what that means. It takes courage to obey Jesus Christ even when it doesn't seem to make any sense to us and everybody else is going the other way. It takes courage to be honest and ethical in the marketplace. It takes courage to have honesty even when it means personal cost to you. It takes courage to share your faith with an unbeliever. It takes courage to remain sexually pure in this sex-obsessed culture and society in which we live today. It takes courage to own up to your own personal sin. It takes courage to stand up for what is right. And it takes courage to speak up for Jesus Christ. Cowards. Cowards follow the crowd. The courageous follow Jesus Christ. The challenge of this series has been to dare to make a difference. Make a difference in your world by daring to be different. And caring more about what God says 
and what God thinks than what other people say and other people think. Because in this life, you only need to live for an audience of one. Jesus Christ. Nothing else matters. So do something courageous today. Make a difference in your world. Be committed. Be confident. Be courageous. Make a difference. Let's pray. Father, for a lot of people, these are fearful days. And your word comes to us today loud and clear. Be strong and be courageous for you are with us wherever we go. God, let us get real with ourselves and own up to our sin. Quit trying to call it everything else but that. Help us today to stand up for what's right. And to be bold in order to speak up for you. Father, I know that when we have our commitment to you and our commitment to truth. When we are confident that you are with us wherever we go. And that we have the courage to take those steps. Then Father, we can make a difference in the world around us in the lives of the people we love. So today, Father, we pray for that kind of courage. In Jesus' name, amen. We've talked about Jesus' commitment last week. We've, uh, when it comes to this idea of confidence, Everything that God says about you and me leads us to the cross. And when it comes to courage, we, we, we love the attribute of courage, the character quality of courage. We've heard a lot about courage today in these days, you know, when it's you know, of our first responders. And I don't know if your picture of courage is when you see a, a firefighter running into a burning building to save a life. We think there's courage. When a law enforcement officer is on the front lines laying their life down at any moment in order to protect and serve, we think there's courage and it's true. Our military personnel all around the globe, courageous heroes, Doctors, nurses, caregivers courageously stepping into the unknown in order to treat others. That we, we hear a lot about courage. It was not only love that led Jesus to the cross. It was courage. You see, the human side of him... <laughs> ask that the cup be passed from him that hey there's got to be another way but then he prayed not my will but yours be done and he courageously took one step after another that led up to Calvary where he was nailed to a cross paying the penalty for your sin and my sin you want to talk about courage We remember not only his sacrifice, but the courage he put on display with each step he took to Calvary. So today we remember not just his love for us, but his courageous sacrifice on our behalf. And in so doing, let's take the wafer together, the body of Christ. And as we remember the shedding of his blood, paying the penalty for our sin, let's share in the cup together.
Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the courage displayed. Not just, not just as he took those steps to the cross. But the courage that it took for him to live his life. Knowing where his path led. Facing each day with courage. Because he loves you. Because he loved truth. And because he loved people. And that love is manifest in our hearts today through his sacrifice that we remember in this time of communion. We thank you for his commitment to us. We thank you for his courage and his love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. There are receptacles at the exits on both sides of the sound booth as you exit. Also at the exits of the doors to place your disposable cup as you leave today. We are glad you're here. As we said next week, we're going back to our normal (laughs) schedule of 9 and 1030 services. If you're in the 10 o'clock or the 11 o'clock service, you'll come to the 1030 service. And your seating will be prearranged. I ask you not to move the chairs when you come in. Just find a set of chairs that accommodate your household. And uh, so you're not going to have assigned seats. Uh, you can sit wherever you want as long as you seat uh, to your household number two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we filled a whole row of nine in the back in the first hour. <laughs> wow. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind uh, next week at 1030. Uh, Shane's video will be out this week as well as probably a, a couple of announcements on Facebook, on our website, uh, you know, kind of letting you know. We're going to follow all the same protocols and procedures, uh, just moving it to 9 and 10.30, and you can sit uh, in your seating arrangement that best uh, perfectly accommodates your household. Thanks for being with us today. God bless you. Have a great week. Be safe, and we'll see you back here next week at 10.30. God bless you.